Okay, we're going to get started. Thank you for coming here today to spend time with us to discuss an initiative about which we feel an uh, increased sense of optimism and promise. As you know, Mayor-elect Reggie Burgess, Mayor Keith Summey and I released exciting news earlier this week in which we shared our vision for a collaborative effort to examine the state of schools in North Charleston via a joint commission. As you know, Representative Marvin Pendarvis has been a longtime advocate for improvement of educational opportunities and outcomes for all communities, but particularly for those in North Charleston. While he couldn't be here to join us today due to a scheduling conflict, we are grateful to Representative Pendarvis's, to Representative Pendarvis, and we are appreciative of his support and engagement around these efforts. He has asked us to let you know on his behalf that he has expressed his full support for this effort and believes that it demonstrates a shared commitment to providing every child in North Charleston with access to a high quality education that will empower them for years to come. The Joint Commission will convene first in February under the direction of the Honorable Henry Darby. Mayor-elect Burgess and I, along with Mayor Summey, can't think of a more passionate or a more astute leader than Mr. Darby to lead this work. Mr. Darby believes in my conversations with him that his greatest accomplishment is fulfilling his mother's dream, Ms. Fleury, of becoming a teacher. And as you know, he is loved and respected as well as admired by many, including me. As you also may know, Mr. Darby was born and raised in the Liberty Hill community in North Charleston which makes him particularly important to this work. He has degrees from Morris College, from Atlanta University, from the Citadel. And while I know all of this embarrasses Mr. Darby, given his humility, he has trained in the methodology and practice of nonviolence direct action as taught by the Dr. Martin Luther King. He has served for 35 plus years in K-12 education, most recently and proudly in North Charleston at North Hi Charleston High School for six years. Mr. Darby has served on the Charleston County Council for the past 20 years and he exemplifies the ideals of servant leadership, which also makes him critical and perfect for this new leadership role. Again, while it makes him extremely uncomfortable, his story of selfless service to children has been broadcast nearly everywhere after he took on three jobs to support students in North Charleston. He was featured on the 52nd annual NAACP and BET Awards show as an unsung hero. And in 2021, he received the prestigious Order of the Palmetto by the Governor Henry McMaster. In 2023, Mr. Darby was recognized by Charleston Business Magazine and as one of Charleston's 50 most influential people. Not only is Mr. Darby a servant leader, but his dedication to improving student outcomes for children, all children, is paramount in his leadership at North Charleston High School. The progress he has seen and the students of North Charleston have seen and celebrated is monumental. North Charleston High has created innovative, personalized learning pathways for student success. They've been showcased at Cognia Impact Conferences and have seen a graduation rate increase of 10 percentage points from 64% a few years ago to 74% most recently in 2023. North Charleston High School has also seen the highest English II EOC scores in four years and highest Biology I EOC scores in four years. Under Mr. Darby's leadership and given his commitment to student success, the total median percentile on the PSAT composite among his students has increased by over 25 percentile points. Mr. Darby has been a leader in ensuring students in his care have more than just academic resources and accomplishments. His leadership has led to the creation of many wraparound services in North Charleston, including a school makeover in 2021 to include a laundromat for students and their families. As you can see, we have no better leader of this work than Henry Darby himself. Yes. Mayor-elect Burgess and I both agree. Yeah. Mr. Darby will work collaboratively with the city of North Charleston and the district 
to build this commission with qualified members who will make recommendations to the school district and to the city on how we move this work forward. The group may focus on areas such as equity in school facilities, in athletics, in stabilizing staffing in our most high need schools, in staffing schools in ways that best support students' needs, in assigning mentors to students, in developing partnerships for wraparound services, in decreasing chronic absenteeism. Mayor Lake Burgess and I agree that we have faith in Mr. Darby and his vision for how this will unfold after this commission convenes first in January. The district is excited about this level of engagement that you're here today and the involvement from our, from our community partners. I want to turn it over to, to Mayor Lake Burgess for any additional thoughts he might have and Mr. Darby, but certainly a majority of our time here today is committed to answering questions that you might have about this work and how it might unfold in the weeks to come. Mayor Lake Burgess. Thank you, Superintendent. I am here because we have to do more in our communities. We must invest in our communities. I am a graduate from the Charleston County School District. Principal Darby was a graduate from the Charleston County School District. So it shows you that two people that came from this district can do things. We're not failures in the Charleston County School District. The City of North Charleston supports it. The majority of people that work for the City of North Charleston or Charleston County School District graduates. What I would like to see as a mayor elect and hoping everything works out January 2nd mm -hmm. is that we thoroughly immerse ourselves as a city, as a government to help our school district to improve the quality of education for all our children. And I asked the superintendent the same things that she feels that when I, as a former chief of police, Every community that I worked in for 34 years are all different. They have different dynamics. How you police in one neighborhood is different than how you police in another neighborhood. So I asked her, can we look at the areas that these schools and these children live in and work on plans from the school side to educate them in a manner that they see is fit for that area? Not leaving them out, but sometimes slowing it down for them sometimes giving them things that they need more of and working with their parents and the community leaders. So the city of North Charleston, we are 100% behind the school district and 100% behind Principal Darby. It's an amazing thing that I would have never thought in my lifetime that the neighborhood that I grew up most, mostly in my lifetime is called Liberty Hill. That's where my father's from. Principal Darby grew up there. We had four freedmen who actually bought that property and built a community. And he and I are the remnants of those four freemen. That was their dream, to have all children prepared for life. That school that Principal Darby is principal of, that's my alumni, I went to Barnes Wilson, North Charleston High School. And it says, education is a possession that no human being can be robbed of. I really believe in that, because without education, I would have never been sitting on this side with you all. Thank you. I'm happy, Claire, to, to thank you for that question, Claire. I'm happy to, to try to answer and then um, throw it over to, to Mayor Lake Burgess <laughs> and Mr. Darby. I, I certainly can't, um, I, I conveyed to, to you all today what I know from Representative Pendarvis. I can't speak as to whether those conversations might continue, but this effort, we certainly hope, will be a collaborative 
effort to address some of the concerns that we've heard from the community. And as we look inside of our own system at how we improve opportunity and access for all children across the system. So I'm hopeful for whatever time that I remain in this seat that we are able to work across the aisle and we're able to build bridges that um, result in positive outcomes for children, particularly those as we're discussing today in North Charleston. So I certainly hope that these efforts and this commission will address some of the concerns from Representative Pendarvis and other community activists um, and members who have expressed uh, notable concern about our work. As Mayor-elect Burgess noted, we have work to do and we're committed to doing just that. I concur. No, man, not on that issue. No. Thank you. Thank you, Ian Claire. Jordan. Um, so, how often is the commission going to meet? And then, are these meetings going to be open to the public for them to watch and participate in this stuff? Thank you for that, Jordan. We, we are going to convene for the first time in January and really lean on Mr. Darby's expertise and his sense of where the commission needs to go uh, before we. Our role, Mayor Lake Burgess and I, our role is not to dictate anything to this commission, but instead to listen to the expertise um, of Mr. Darby and those that are gathered around the table. Some questions that we've received in advance are similar to those, Jordan. Um, how many people will comprise the commission? Who will appoint again? We're going to lean on our knowledgeable leaders, those who know this work best, to tell us who, what, when, and where, including how long this commission will meet. I'm hopeful that uh, suggestions and recommendations will be able to emerge from this committee in a timely way so that they can be considered for our budget process, which is already underway. But we certainly will prioritize um, the recommendations that come from this group as Mayor Lake Burgess and I work collaboratively to see how we can build an ecosystem of support for children so that not only the school district um, so, so that the city joins in the responsibility for educating and providing resources for children because we truly believe in our hearts that's the only way we can meet the needs of kids and the needs of families and community is through collaboration. I agree with it. Um, if you were looking back in when I was in school, it's like in the 70s and 80s, what, what occurred back then, uh, we actually had the same class every day five days a week, and we had the same teachers. Um, when my life really changed somewhat to really buy into education, as, as the superintendent said, it, is that when we collaborated, there was a collaboration that we would bring in a, a model called CREOC, Cooper River Educational Occupational Center. That center was at Oak Terrace Preserve in North Charleston by Lackawanna. What it did is it provided young men and women who may not aspire to go to a four-year college to an opportunity to actually uh, go and learn how to be a brick mason, learn how to be an electrician, learn how to be a welder, learn how to work with you know woodwork, cosmetology. And what it did, it actually gave, we, we went to regular school one half of the day, and then the second half we went to CREOC. And I can tell you some people that attended that with me are actually not only entrepreneurs, but they are small business owners right now because their strength, as I said before, what is that kid's strength? They found our strength and said, hey, we're gonna help you to advance that strength. And now all the folks that we see now that I went to school with, they are actually owning those businesses and doing the things that we did back in the 80s because we were provided that. And that's what Ms. Superintendent said, she said, you know, we can slow things down and help these young people. Um, but then also too, in the elementary, in the middle school section, Mr. Darby can tell you we have an award-winning program on Liberty Hill called Liberty Hill Enrichment After School Program. And you know, that, that program uh, takes those young kids from elementary and middle school that feed into Liberty Hill Monday through Friday. They don't go home, they go straight to their program and those ch children receive tutoring and mentoring. I'm there every Monday talking about real life situations, conflict resolutions, social emotions, but they receive tutoring from the kids from other schools to help them with their lessons, not only the homework, but to help them to understand when they go back to class the next day, they can understand the lessons 
that are being taught. So it's like, like the superintendent said, we, we, we're on the right path. We're, we're talking the same conversation and we believe in the same things. Well, it's not actually anything brand new. It's been talked about uh, for quite some time, even a couple of years now. But firstly, I want to say that um, I appreciate uh, the clairvoyance and the foresight of uh, Superintendent Huggins, and also appreciate the acceptance and the foresight of Marilek Burgess for allowing this to come into existence. Uh, even though I haven't done any empirical research, I'm thinking this is perhaps one of the first time, at least on the southeast coast, that City Hall and the school district superintendent will be getting together to resolve a common problem or resolving uh, the fairness and equity among all of the students. Um, and I'm also very appreciative, uh, Ms. Huggins, of the accolades and approbation. Approbations, uh, hopefully I am deserving of it. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Um, but it would be, um, a commission of divergent backgrounds, divergent ideas. This could be one of uh, collaboration. It's going to be one of collegiality, and um, it's going to be the common cause of resolving what is best for children. Because in the final analysis, whether you are the mayor or whether you're the superintendent, in the final analysis, as adults, we do what is best for children in the field of education. So again, to answer the question, there's nothing, something brand new, but I'm just so happy that they are bringing this dream and structuring it into reality so that fairness and equity can abound. I'd like to say something too on that. I can remember when 1993, 94 came around, Mayor Summit was just elected. I was the first SRO placed in high schools under his leadership. I asked to go to North Charleston High. Why did I ask to go to North Charleston High? Not because it's my alumni, it's because I knew that that's the namesake for our city. Like I said to you all before, I'm about image. I'm about being an ambassador to change the image of North Charleston. And I saw the superintendent, I'd known her for years, working hard for the school district, but I didn't know that she was an acting school superintendent. And when I found out, I said, man, I could talk to Ms. Anita because we're like-minded. So the things I saw in school as an SRO and my 34 years in law enforcement, people do, don't y'all know that the folks that we arrest for homicides since probably 10 years in a row, the majority of those folks that we arrest that committed homicide, the suspects, the highest level that they have achieved in school is ninth grade, sometime 10th. If we can work with the school district and Principal Darby as a city, we can actually combat that. We can actually help those kids' self-efficacy go up. We can help those children realize that they have a whole lot more than the streets are telling them. We can help those parents to be more engaging when they see the children enjoying themselves. And when we do that, what happens to crime? It starts to go down. It won't go away, but it'll go down because that child would think less about negative things and more about positive things. So when you asked that question, I thought about that, about that in 1993. Thank, th thank, thank you for that, Hillary. We, we, we believe that this commission will come together under the leadership of Mr. Darby and that Mr. Darby will make recommendations to Mayor Lake Burgess and me. Hopefully we can be of 
we can lend a listening ear if Mr. Darby thinks it's appropriate during some of the sessions. Um, but then we will take those recommendations and we will act on them. Some of them may require school board approval. Um, I can think that if, if some require a certain level of budgetary or fiscal oversight, we might have to move those forward. Um, if, if there are certain um, policies that might need to be changed, that might require uh, some board oversight. But, but for the most part, I would think that we would share excitedly this information with the school board, but that I don't know that a lot of the actions will require official action mm -hmm. from the school board. Certainly, if they require action to the school board, we will adhere to a policy, we'll take them to the school board. We'll, we want to do everything collaboratively with our school board and help them also build relationships with the community and with their constituents. So we'll certainly debrief them regularly on this process. We've, I've shared with the school board that I met with Mayor-elect Burgess and my intent to engage with Mr. Darby on this matter and what feedback I've received from, from trustees has been positive thus far. We've not done any other formal presentation to the school board though yet, Hillary, um, but we do intend to keep them abreast. Did that answer both portions of your question? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're happy to take more questions. Claire? Well, yes, that would be part of it, ma'am. Uh, again, uh, the commission, our first responsibility would be that to listen. And whatever problems that we have, we're going to deliberate. And then thereafter, we're going to communicate uh, to the mayor elect and to the superintendent. But it would be all inclusive uh, in terms of students, parents, the community at large. Uh, matter of fact, we may go as far as uh, other stakeholders in terms of the, the business community and civic leaders. So it will be all inclusive. Mayor, Mr. Darby really is an expert at doing this. You'll see that in North Charleston High School. He, and again, I'm not going to look directly at him because I know he'll want me to stop talking, but he is an expert at building an ecosystem of support that extends beyond the school walls. And so we know that he'll take that expertise and determine how, as a system, we can do just what he and some of our other very astute school leaders have started to do. We've seen that happen in the downtown area, for example, under the leadership of Mrs. Cheryl Swinton, Mrs. Stephanie Spann, Dr. Amber Sains, Mrs. Janice Malone, and Mrs. Wanda Sheets. And the District 20, they've developed family support coaches, for example, and other wraparound services that we think are critical to student success. And so we're, again, going to lean on Mr. Darby's expertise and his experience in doing this to think about how we scale this at a larger rate for all of our children and communities. Well, I'm looking forward, firstly, in terms of the personalities who are going to be on board. Of course, we would like to have like-minded persons, but of course, we want those persons to come up with different perspectives. As long as that individual, individual is not obstructive, uh, we want to move forward in the area of positivity. Uh, the negative we don't need, but definitely uh, different ideas to come along. So that's the first thing uh, in terms of making that selection of a divergent background of individuals. And then um, hearing, secondly, to hear about not necessarily the complaints, but the improvements which are needed within our schools, whether it uh, is monetary resources or whether it's uh, physical resources, whatever the problems may be, we will entertain um, those uh, improvements which are to be made. Thank you, Jordan. Meredith? Well, right, I am going to make a suggestion uh, to the mayor elect and to the superintendent, um, but no more between us at 7 and 10, nothing beyond uh, 10, uh, nothing below 7. Thank you. Hillary? Anything else? Meredith? You good, Jordan? Thank you, too. We appreciate you being here. Thank God you. bless y'all. Thank you, Thank you Omedia.